Hello and welcome to Beamer, folks. We come now to the software I used in this and one or two other items. The software is appreciably used. Without them, um, I certainly wouldn't have been able to build this uh, barometer, this project. Uh, so I'm very grateful. And when you consider that these are done, um, you know, the software is done for free. The, the library software is done effectively for free. I haven't had to pay for that. I think it's quite a remarkable thing and process. Right, the first item on the list is a library item, which is an Adafruit sensor.h. Uh, I'm sure you'd be able to look this up on Google or go to Adafruit and get um, the exact uh, library if it's not actually listed within the um, within the IDE. Next, um, next on the list is again Adafruit and it, it's to do with the control of the uh, barometric sensor the BMP280 and it's called the Adafruit BMP280.h. Um, underneath here you've got the uh, remarkable bit of software that was um, built for uh, converting uh, an Arduino 8-bit um, A to D converter to reconfiguring um, the Arduino into a 16-bit D to A converter. Um, I just have a quick look and let me see if I can... And uh, that's what it looks like. 16 bit. I won't go through all the fine details of this. <coughs> I'll present my IDE software and uh, you can go through it then and see what I've done. But um, in principle, it changes um, the pulse width modulation from 8 bits to 16 bits. And um, there's the code for it. I've modified the code very slightly. Um, I didn't need two outputs, I only needed one. Uh, and I think I put that on pin 9, but we'll find out when I get to my coding. But there it is in its entirety. Um, I didn't use all of it, I only used effectively the bit that I want. And I was very appreciative of that. So let me take this um, down and bring this back to here. The next, the um, next bit of software here is something which I have used quite a bit. I use, um, I find using VeroBoard simpler for one-offs and two-offs, particularly the um, the uh, strip version of a, a Vero ball, which is the proprietary name. I don't particularly use, there's nothing wrong with the Perf ball, which are basically isolated little lands um, in a sort of X, Y net matrix. I actually prefer the strip version, although this bit of software can actually do both, but I basically work in uh, a Vero board format. And um, let's see where we go with that. Let's just do that and open the and uh, where do we come to? Um, yeah, this is it. Uh, DIY Layout Creator. And uh, I've used it for quite a while. It's very simple to learn, very simple to use, very straightforward and very effective at creating a very efficient layout on a small board. Very And uh, much easier uh, to do than, than uh, creating your own uh, semi-professional layout board and sending it off abroad and waiting for the time for it to arrive <coughs> and of course you're paying additionally for the cost of, of transport for those boards to you which is sometimes a bit of a hidden cost and can make um, what is an attractive low cost board into a quite expensive board simply because the transport costs are quite high. That's that, let's move on to the uh, next one. Let's see it for a moment. <clears throat> uh, the, the Arduino used, well, 
you could probably leave it. I mean, I've used a variety of Arduinos, a Nano, an Uno, and, uh, and a Pro Mini. But this was the one that I effectively purchased. I always buy a couple of um, boards um, just in case one doesn't work quite, quite right and you've got a spare one. But if you're happy to, um, to buy more than that, you're welcome. Um, that's it. This is the Pro Mini, buy one, buy two. And you can see the individual cost is extraordinarily low, uh, £1.24. And um, hopefully, although I'm not certain about this, it's a bit ambiguous, this is, but hopefully um, you've got here um, a quartz crystal rather than a ceramic one, but I'm not completely convinced. But this Pro Mini behaves in the most stableist way. The Arduino Uno did, but of course I couldn't fit it within the um, box that I had. And um, uh, and you've got a pound uh, postage um, uh, posting packaging there. So let's drop that down and have a look at the next item. Okay, next item on the list is um, sensor use. Let's have a quick look at that. Open hyperlink. There we are. Let's have a look at that. There it is, £1.35 each. There's an awful lot of information available on the World Wide Weird uh, on the BMP280, and I suggest if you're interested to uh, go through that. And um, again, you've got a pound uh, posting package on charge on that. But at £1.30, that, that's very reasonable, isn't it? Um, and in fact, I think that is for two pieces. So uh, that's incredibly good value. Isn't it? Let's go down to there and carry on with this. Uh, analog meter, um, had a bit of a struggle to find it, but I got there to find this, but I got there in the end. Um, open hyperlink, let's have a quick look at that. And here we are, here's the meters. There it is, 5 million amp meter. Uh, my goodness, 279 of those have been sold today. Uh, there we are, £3.43. That's, uh, that's reasonable, isn't it, for a, a readout device. Brings that has a sort of a, uh, um, a historic, you know, if not antique uh, appearance to your project. That's a 5 million amp meter. And that down. And what else have we got here? Finally, of course, you've got thank you very much to Wikipedia for their article on um, very elegant barometers, which I couldn't possibly afford. And I wouldn't pretend that my unit has uh, anywhere near the elegance of that, but um, but elegance comes in many forms, doesn't it? Finally. Um, I just thought I would introduce you to a source of accurate, my local accurate barometric pressure. Um, you can use an, air, an airport, but um, an, an airport uh, to me was too far away. Barometric pressure does change quite quickly over distance. It does vary. So to have a very local source of accurate uh, barometric pressure is a wonderful thing. Um, I refer to this website here, um, which is myweather2.com, and it presents um, uh, talking marina weather information, and it's proved to be quite accurate. Um, if you go along here to the um, almost the last column, you find um, barometric pressure. It's, uh, it's presented in millibars. Millibars are equivalent to um, hectopascals. Uh, and to convert this number here to a pascal, all you need to do is add two zeros effectively. 
Um, and, uh, and I found it to be very useful. Incidentally, I'm not paid by this website to promote them. I just find it a very good source of local barometric pressure information. And I would recommend that if you are seriously considering building this project, to have at hand a local uh, accurate source of barometric information within, within say, three miles. This is Beamer signing out for now.